And now we come to a very special award for a lifetime of campaigning on secularist, humanist, and atheist free thought issues. Many of you will know Barry Duke as the present editor of The Free Thinker, but what is not so well known is his long and colourful backstory. From his earliest days in journalism in apartheid South Africa, Barry has aggressively fought censorship. He bravely wrote in opposition to the powerful and very racist publications and entertainments control board, which oversaw uh, what was and was not acceptable to the authorities in South Africa at the time. At that time, there were around 60,000 items banned by the censors. Needless to say, the Freethinker was on that list of subversive publications and could not be tolerated. As well as the usual stuff that authoritarians think of as threatening to their power, anything critical of Christianity was branded objectionable. Even the children's book, Black Beauty, and a poster declaring Black is Beautiful, fell victim to the censors. It all seems ridiculous now, but at the time it, read, it, it was very, very oppressive to an awful lot of people, um, and it made the lives of so many South Africans hellish. Barry's agitation prompted a, a strong backlash against the censors from academics, writers, and others. This, in turn, led to legislation making even any criticism of the censors' activities a criminal offence. So Barry fled South Africa when he was ticked off that he was in imminent danger of being detained for a violation of the Suppression of Communism Act. After he was granted asylum in the UK in 1973, he immediately made contact with Bill McElroy, a former NSS General Secretary, but at the time the editor of The Freethinker. Barry then began writing articles for the magazine about his experiences of censorship in apartheid South Africa and their links to the Calvinist Christianity upon which many of the laws of the country were based. He had no inkling at the time that he would one day become the magazine's editor, a job he has now done for just over 20 years. Having settled in the UK, he became actively involved in humanism, atheism, gay rights, in 1979, when he was a director of the NSS, he was a founding member of the Gay Humanist Group um, after Mary Whitehouse began a private prosecution for blasphemous libel against gay news. He and his late partner, Brian Parry, then launched a magazine for the group. Around five years ago, he was asked by the UK gay humanist charity, the Brink Triangle Trust, to launch an online magazine and a website. Um, and after settling in Spain in 2010, he became involved in the creation of Benidorm's first gay pride event, working alongside Spanish, British and Dutch activists and attending meetings with the city's mayor and other elected officials. Barry has now become involved in the Costa Blanca press, where his objections to an article saying that Spain had been better under Franco <laughs> because it kept women and gays in their place, <laughs> resulted in the editor of Euro Weekly News inviting him to write a regular column. Despite his age, and I'm sure he doesn't mind me telling you, he was 70 last month, and the amount of work he does seven days a week to keep the Freethinker and the Pink Humanist websites and Facebook pages updated on a daily basis, his passion for social justice, equality and free speech burns as brightly today as it did when he first began challenging racists and bigots in the earliest days as a journalist. I think you'll agree that Barry deserves the recognition of this Lifetime Achievement Award and the encouragement to keep on keeping on. I'm very pleased to say that he's with us today from his home in Spain. So ladies and gentlemen, Barry Duke. Short. But first of all, I'd just say, uh, Buenas tardes, amigos. <laughs> and that's as much Spanish as you're going to get out of me today because um, I'm pretty embarrassed about the amount of Spanish that I've actually learned in the last seven years. 
I've been working too hard. <laughs> the language doesn't come e a new language doesn't come easy when you're an expat and you're my age. But I try. I was saying um, to a Spanish fellow in the bar a few weeks ago, I tried to have a conversation in Spanish, and I said to him, I am so embarrassed about the level of Spanish that I have. And I assumed that the word for embarrassed in um, Spanish was embarazado. <laughs> Uh, he said, no possible. <laughs> uh, I, I asked the barman what I might have just told this man. And he said to me, you've just told him you're pregnant. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I, and I wasn't. No. Anyway. Uh, just to go back. When, when, I got, when I got news of the um, award, when I got out of the shock of it, I suddenly, and, and, and being asked by Terry to um, uh, put together a little bit about my background and keep it to less than 50,000 words, um, I had to cast my mind back and wondered how I got from there to here. And. I have to say to you that it goes back to when I was 15 and what happened is that we had a neighbour that my mother told me never to associate with because he was an atheist uh, but he also had a son who was the same age as, as I was um, but this man uh, and because I had an enormous passion for reading this man said to me one day <clears throat> I want you to read this book and it was James Bradbury's uh, Fahrenheit 451, which is about the burning of books. And it was, I found it absolutely fascinating, it was written in 1953, and it was about censorship. Um, and it was on the banned list in South Africa as <laughs> well. Anyway, I got hold of this book, read it, was totally fascinated by it, and um, we were in, uh, our English teacher at the high school that we were at asked every kid to bring his favourite book in and I brought in Fahrenheit 451. <laughs> uh, the, the teacher looked at me and said, I don't know this book, what is it? I said, well, if you want to know about it, I said, go to, go to the library, look up uh, Jacobson's Index to Objectionable Literature. <laughs> And, and you will find it listed with all the other 60,000 books that we are not allowed to read. I was 15 at the time. When it was discovered that I was in possession of a banned book, <clears throat> um, that, that was my first caning. Um, the second violation um, was when uh, at a school assembly, a head of a general, uh, general election in 1961, uh, we were all asked to stand and pray that Hendrik Verwood would win the next general election. You didn't have to pray for that. You knew he was going to win <laughs> the next general election because nobody other than white Afrikaners white, who, who were in the majority would vote for him, so I refused to stand up and pray. And it was noted. And then everybody would stand up, was asked to stand up and sing the national anthem. I sat down and refused to sing the national anthem. A finger was pointed at me from the stage by the headmaster and said, you will stand up and you will sing the national anthem. So I sang Sikalale Africa which was the uh, anthem of the then banned African National Congress. When I was hauled into the, <coughs> in, into the, the uh, headmaster's office, came and told that I was, be, uh, I was going to be expelled for this, um, the, um, the headmaster said to me, Duke, you're a born troublemaker, 
and you'll be a troublemaker for the rest of your life. I took this, I took to be a career advice. <laughs> the award that I got today proves that there are benefits in being a rebel with a cause. Yeah.